Hi, I'm Lynn, Professional Learning Manager with SCMA, here to tell you a wee bit with my colleague Lisa about realising the ambition being me, the National Practice Guidance for Early Years in Scotland. In this introduction, I would like to draw your attention to the aim of this document. The first focus is on the early stages in children's learning journeys and how this builds the foundations for their later outcomes and how we can shape practice to give children the very best start in life. The second focus is on ensuring that early learning and childcare experiences are of the highest quality and meet the developmental needs of our youngest learners. The importance of relationships and nurture are key as early years practitioners help move towards realising the ambition of making Scotland the best place in the world to grow up. You will find the aims of this guidance are very similar to building the ambition and the language used in sections 3 and 6 is very similar to the health and social care standards. Lisa will tell you more about these links. The very noticeable tartan cover has been used to demonstrate not just the Scottishness of realising the ambition, being me, but also to demonstrate how the various transitions children will have in their early years are threaded throughout this document. Hello everyone. For those of you that don't already know me, my name is Lisa Franz and I'm the Child Mind and Development Officer in South Lanarkshire at SCMA. I come from a unique position because it wasn't so long ago that I too was a professional child minder just like yourselves, engaging in national and local guidance and frameworks within my practice and at times not even realising that those connections were being made because I was just doing what came naturally within my role and that was to provide quality experiences for the children and their families. I remember back in 2014 I attended the Building the Ambition workshop as an SCMA member and I remember thinking that evening, I get it now, this is what I'm doing with the children, this is where it all links in, being able to reflect on the experiences and enhancing the experiences and outcomes that I was already providing for children in my care. Now, six years later, the document's been revised and I want to take the opportunity to reassure you that everything within building the ambition is still very much stands as good practice. Pre-birth to three and building the ambition shape practice across Scotland and realising the ambition being me will continue to embed this. I understand that it can feel daunting when any new guidance and frameworks come out and you might find yourself asking, what does this mean for me in my practice? What does this mean for my setting? How could I possibly learn or understand all this? Um, you know, these are all valid questions to be asking yourself, but as you begin to engage with the document and start to work through the sections, you're already demonstrating your reflective practice and you'll also be making connections and links with other um, threads to documents such as health and social care standards, curriculum for excellence and also the national standard. You'll find the illustration sections particularly helpful and Lynn will start to talk you through each of the sections um, later. The guidance is written to support practitioners like yourself. Um, it's to support you in identifying your own confidence and capabilities and supporting children from birth and beyond. We want to ensure that children um, in Scotland are given the best possible opportunities um, to grow um, and to learn and this, this is obviously so important that we're, we're able to self-reflect in our own practice and, and make that possible. You'll have noticed my use of the word quality and you'll no doubt relate this to the quality themes from your own inspection experiences with the care inspectorate. In section 7 of the revised document focuses on ensuring quality through critical and reflective practice. Our role as professional childminders is paramount in enhancing learning and lifelong skills for children in Scotland and we want to ensure that this reflective practice continues and that we feel confident and comfortable in doing so um, and the new guidance within realising the ambition being me will support us in, in, in doing this and it will further enhance this. As a childminder I found it particularly valuable engaging in um, professional learning opportunities provided by SCMA and I very much look forward to providing you support in the future through our, our future workshops. I would now like to focus on the new areas of this publication. Schemas. When children repeat patterns of behaviour, this is known as schematic play. For example, children carrying all the bricks from one place to another in a bag or pushing a doll around in a pram. This repeated behaviour could be described as transporting, 
one of the examples of schematic play. It is important for you to be able to recognise this as early learning and help support the child. Adversity and trauma. Adverse issues of abuse, neglect or living in an unstable household with significant problems can cause toxic stress for children. Growing up around adults experiencing drug abuse, mental health or alcohol problems, or broader issues such as bereavement, loss, bullying, homelessness or violence can have a detrimental effect on children's capacity to learn and develop. It has also been noticed that the impact that may result from poverty related stresses are really important. Experiencing poverty makes it harder to lessen the impact of childhood adversity and any resulting trauma. This section continues to highlight the importance of trauma and resilience. Additional support needs. When working with children, it is essential that we start from what a child can do rather than what they cannot do. Use your knowledge of the individual child's strength to build on small steps of progress. The most important thing for us to do is to respond to every child in a unique way with respect and build strong relationships. Childminders are especially well placed to cater for individual children with additional support needs due to their low numbers and increased one-to-one -one time. Gender bias. Many of you will be aware of the Care Inspector resource, Gender Equal Play, and this section further addresses the issue. Children receive and absorb gender stereotyped messages about what they can and cannot do according to their sex from a very early age. We have an important role to play in challenging these views before they become too ingrained. While children should not be coerced into any activity, adopting the attitude that children are able to choose whatever they want for themselves will not counteract the problem. Being you is about looking after your own good mental well-being. Give, connect, keep learning, take notice, be active. This focus on well-being includes the development of confident children and has strong links to both GERFECT and the Curriculum for Excellence. We have also provided SCME members with a copy of the Natural Health Award, one of the free resources available to access on page 6 of your first e-bulletin, which you should have received on the 7th of May. Early Childhood Curriculum we know how babies and children learn best. They learn best in an environment of quality interactions, interesting spaces and experiences. They learn best in environments that inspire them to be curious and creative. Curriculum doesn't have to be formal. It is creating learning environments and being aware of what you are doing and why you're doing it. Childminders do this on a daily basis. Pedagogy. Not new, but worth revisiting. As previously explored, pedagogy is what you know about children and how they learn. Together with the experiences and responses we can provide. A pedagogical leader is someone who understands how children learn and develop and makes this happen. Enabling you to deliver the early childhood curriculum which is also a focus. This sounds like a childminder to me. Quality through reflective practice. The National Standard for Funded Providers, the Health and Social Care Standards and the Care Inspector at New Early Learning and Childcare Quality Framework support the ongoing journey of improvement required in meeting children's care and development needs. Reflective practice enables you to continually work towards improving your practice and enabling the quality of what you deliver and enhancing that quality. Transition. This new section recognises the importance of transitions in children's lives and the importance of supporting children through them. 
Your aspiration should be to promote in babies and children a sense of belonging and a continuity of learning in a caring and nurturing childminding environment. The five C's that contribute to a positive transition are consistency, collaboration, culture, communication and being child-centred. Section 9 shows what we can learn from other curriculum approaches. We know that positive outcomes for children and families are realised in settings which uphold the rights of the child. This section also contains challenge questions. In closing, realising the ambition being me is there to support everyone working with babies and young children. The existence of the child's voice helps us all to be mindful of who matters the most and what they need from us to develop, to learn and to experience success in their young lives. Realising the ambition being me complements the Scottish Government's programme of early learning and childcare expansion and key areas of policy, guidance and good practice. It may reaffirm what is good practice for some but for others, some aspects will be new and the guidance gives opportunities for self-reflection and an opportunity to attempt new things on the journey to raise quality. Reflect on the guidance and how you can realise the importance of playing your part in empowering all Scotland's children to be me.